Yes. I have literally been sitting in this chair waiting for this box. Yeah. Hey everybody, Mark Callie, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'm down here on the floor of my fish room where I'm surrounded by quarantine tanks. I've got them going up the walls. I've got them down here on the floor with me. And in case you're wondering, yes, there's a fish in here. It's a captive bred gold flake angel. I'm quarantining him before I hand him over to a client. And I'm gonna hand you over to Jimmy in just a second to talk about how we're acclimating his fish. Before I do that, I wanna go over some basics of acclimation because acclimating them is the first time where you can really set them up for success in your tank, hopefully in your quarantine tank, because you are quarantining right. It's actually a straightforward process. I'm gonna make it paint my numbers so that it goes as smoothly as possible for you. When I'm acclimating fish, I'm concerned about two main things, salinity and temperature. I want the salinity and temperature of the water where the fish are currently in to be as close as possible to the salinity and temperature of the tank that they're going into. The closer these parameters are, the less stress on the fish when the fish go into the receiving tank. What about pH and what about ammonia? Well, you want to get pH matched as closely as possible too. And I realize that most people, especially new saltwater aquarium hobbyists, aren't going to have a way to check pH. They don't have a pH probe or they don't have that pH checker around sitting in their arsenal. Now, I recommend you do if you have any way to check pH certainly do it because matching those things will only help your acclimation process go smoother. Now what about ammonia? Well the argument here is that as pH comes up, ammonia gets more toxic. Therefore you should add a pH neutralizer to the bag of the bucket like Seachem's Prime. Now I've personally never had this problem, but if you want to add Prime to the bag of the bucket, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Here's your shopping list for what you need to acclimate your fish. A bucket. One gallon if you're only acclimating a few fish, or a five gallon bucket if you have lots of fish. Don't forget your lid. Refractometer or salinity checker. I use the Hanna salinity tester as it also tells me temperature. Thermometer if you're not using the Hanna salinity tester. pH probe or Hanna pH checker. Drip kit makes acclimation super easy. And yes, we have a pre-made acclimation kit for you over at saltwateraquarium.com. Got your fish? First, open the box up in a dim room. Opening the box in a bright room can light shock the fish. Then float the bags in the tank where the fish are gonna be going for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, gently empty the contents of the bags into the bucket. Check the salinity, temperature, and if you're gonna do it, pH of the tank where the fish are going and take notes of these numbers. Then check the pH, salinity, and temperature of the water in the bucket where the fish are currently located. The farther apart these two numbers are, the longer that you're gonna need to acclimate the fish. Now I personally don't like to acclimate over an hour though. 30 minutes is usually enough time to get my parameters close. Then start your drip acclimation and close the valve until water is about to be a constant stream, but still dripping. Make sure you add a lid to the bucket so the fish can't jump out. Every five minutes, check the salinity, temperature, and if you're checking at pH of the water in the bag or the bucket where the fish are getting acclimated. As those parameters get closer to the tank where those fish are going, then you can increase your drip rate. Then when you get really close or they match, then you can place the fish into the tank where they're going. So say the salinity in my display tank was 1.025, salinity in the bucket is 1.023 or 1.024, temperature in here is 80, temperature in the bucket is 78, I'm gonna go ahead and place those fish in the display tank. Now, if you're placing those fish in a display tank or a quarantine tank with other fish, make sure that you use an acclimation box. This way, the fish that are already in the tank get to have a look at the fish in the box, and the fish in the box can have a look at the fish in the tank. You can detect any aggression and head that off before it starts. Then, make sure you place them into the tank by gently submerging the bucket and letting the fish swim out. At that point, they're in their new home and you're off to the races. So that's how I acclimate fish. And with that, here's Jimmy. Yo. Yo. I got my camera rolling and I got my box of fish in front of me and I'm calling Mr. Saltwater Tank. Can I crack this box open even though I need to go do some work right now? Open it. Not in a light, in a bright room. Not in a bright room. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it in the dark, but like these guys have basically been 
They've been in pitch black for 12, 18 hours. Okay. Here they are, there's my fish. I just spoke to Mr. Saltwater Tank and he said, go up close to your uh, quarantine tank and then get all the lights turned off because the fish were just shipped in a box in the dark. One big bag. Oh, there they all are. This is awesome. Hey, little guy, there's a little swimming clownfish. Hi, welcome. Check it out. They're all swimming. <laughs> yes. Watchman Gobi. And then we've got a clownfish. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, there's Nemo. There he is. There's the little guy. I'm going to name you Nemo. This guy is an orchid dotty back. I love that purple color. There they are. So they're floating in there. Mark said float them in there for about 15 minutes. So what time is it now? Okay. And I'm gonna give Mark a call and figure out how we're going to drip acclimate them. What? what? <laughs> what up? Bags. So you got fish, you're floating them, now you're ready to drip them. Here's your drip kit. Where are your clips? Clips. Got a clip? Yep, the fish got to go in the bucket. There's the bucket. Put the fish in the bucket. What you do is take the bag out, put the bag in the bucket, cut the top of the bag off, and then gently empty out the contents of the bag into the bucket. Dude. Take the three biggest ones, cut them open, and put them in the bottom. Ah, that's very smart, Mr. Saltwater Tank. You know, it's funny because you get so excited, you don't even think about the obvious, right? Yeah, that's why I'm here. Yes. Hey guys, how do you like your bucket? Clip the yellow part of the dripper that's got the little hook on the top of the tank. If I yeah. siphon it, it's going to come out pretty fast. That's why you have the valve. So you turn the little knob on the valve to slow down the drip rate. So I get the siphon going into the bucket? Yep. Okay, and then I valve it to what? To the point where it's still dripping, but it's just about to be a constant stream of water. So, um, I'm just going to give it a suck with a siphon. Is that all right? There you go, buddy. we got a Chris in you. Yeah. The more salt water you drink, the better your tank will be. Oh. Go, 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 go. Oh. Oh, man, you just spilled it all over the furniture. There you go. Now, if you... If you're going to babysit it, watch it, that's fine. If not, you can leave it running and just put a lid on it so the fish don't happen to jump out. Um, well, how are they going to jump out? Don't ask. Just do it. I go for about 30 minutes. The water volume comes up two to three times what it is now. And then, yep. then what do I do? I put them, I just, do I dump them in here? But take the bucket, put it down in the tank. So you're not pouring them out. You kind of put sink the bucket a little bit in the tank, tip it up, and let them swim out. Yes. Look at that. 